Yeah, I mean, I think the, the game uh, really showed uh, what this program's all about and, and the, uh, the pride um, that we have walking off the field, knowing that we literally gave it everything we had. And I think, um, you know, it, it, was a, it was a tough game for playing against a great opponent and, and a team that, you know, really uh, obviously challenged us uh, to the limits. And, um, you know, we had uh, opportunities uh, that we, you know, we weren't giving up. And I think that was really clear through, you know, through the full 90 minutes that uh, there was a real commitment to leave everything we had through uh, years and years of hard work with this group here, um, you know, three of our five seniors and, um, you know, to kind of push us through to the end to, to really, uh, you know, see if we could find that last little bit. And, um, you know, nothing, nothing to hang your heads about because uh, it, was, it was a terrific, terrific soccer game oh, with two great teams and, uh, you know, a lot of heart you know, left there on the field. Does this game feel any different as opposed to maybe the first two games of the, of the tournament being on the stage in the semifinals, kind of knowing that these are the last two matches of the year if you can have the one in advance? Just, is there a different mentality going into these games? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've, we've talked a lot um, all season and this week about, you know, striking the balance between, you know, we were using the phrase like focused fun, right? Like it's, 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 uh, uh, it's big, big stakes, um, but we also, uh, you know, we're here because we deserve it. We're here because we earned it. Um, we're here because we're good enough. Um, and, uh, you know, we had to draw on, on that belief to, to know that we had what it, what it took to come out and play a great, a great game. Um, and we strike that with, you know, with, with the right attitude of, you know, um, not putting too much pressure on ourselves, not taking it too seriously because um, the game is, is so much more fun when you have fun with it. Um, and, and that's something we, we did really well all season long. For the student athletes, what would you guys kind of see there in that second half just to kind of take a little bit maybe uh, kind of what you guys see on the field from, from your, each, each of your spots? Um, I mean, I've, I've obviously got the best view of the whole field and I'm just so proud of the intensity and the hard work that we um, displayed in the second <laughs> half, I think, to to go down uh, a goal and then two goals and to come back with that um, ferocity and that intensity that we displayed, just winning those balls, creating good opportunities and chances for ourselves. I think we really left it all out on the field there today and I couldn't be more proud to end my season that way. Yeah, I think especially in the second half, you can see how much heart everyone was playing with and how much we just wanted to play for each other and how much we just wanted to because of how much we love each other, we just want to give everything we have to each other. And I am so proud of this group of people for the season and for the game. And I'm so lucky to be a part of this team. And then I couldn't play the second half, but honestly, being on the bench with my teammates was so incredible. I mean, watching people step up and just work, every single person was just working so, so hard. It makes me so proud. Like. I know a couple of us were crying because we were so proud and like people were screaming despite the score. It was, it's just such a good feeling when you know that your team has your back no matter what. You know? Yeah, you know, the, um, I, I hear Megan walking in just before this press conference and she's talking to, you know, a, a first year player who um, has played a lot for us and, and has been key all season long, but was put in a position tonight where she had to step up with the injuries we had at center mid and, um, and, and she was a spark plug for us. She, yes. was, she was a stud and, and Megan walking in here is telling her, man, thank you. Thank you for playing such a great game. Thank you for, you know, uh, what you've given to help me have a great senior season. And I can't wait to see what you do the next three years. And that really just summarizes um, you know, what this program is all about. The closest I came to tears after the game was when Tom's came over to you and gave you a hug and said, you know, thank you for everything you've given me. And, and you mean so much to me. And, and uh, you know, just thank you for being such a big part of my life. Like that was, a, that was the only time I teared up piece mm -hmm. because it, it just really hit it home for me of like, that's what it's about. Um, that's what it's about. The, these guys yeah. care so much about each other. They work so hard for each other. And, um, you know, just nothing but pride right now for Pomona Pitcher Soccer. Yes. Yeah, I also, um, like, when we were eliminated from the Elite Eight my freshman year, I remember a senior coming mm -hmm. up to me and being like, you have three more years, make it count. Like, you are an incredible player and just keep going and keep moving this program forward. And I think that was so special. And I'm so excited to see what this team has mm -hmm. in the next few years. Thinking about the senior class as a whole, if you can just try to sum it up, how would you best describe this group of, of players mm. for you? Uh, well, I mean, 
I mean, I'll say trailblazers, but not because we didn't have people who were doing uh, good stuff for us, you know, before, and not because we won't, you know, after. Um, but this is a group that really, you know, took uh, the foundation that was was had slowly been gathering momentum, you know, over the years, and this is the, the team that really. Uh, Took it to the level that allowed us to be in this space in this in this weekend, um, because they understood that uh, being a good team um, can only get you so far, and be, even being a great team can only get you so far. Um, and we had a moment last week at practice. You know, it was uh, early in the morning. <laughs> we were out there um, at 6 a.m. before Thanksgiving break, um, and we saw a team and they're you know out at doing their workout. You know, in, in the non-traditional season, and I just pulled the team in. I said, that's. That was you guys a year ago when we came up short. We didn't get in the postseason, um, and you guys were out there because you weren't satisfied and you knew you could do that a little bit more, and you put a year's worth of work into it. And that's why we're here right now, not doing an off-season lift. We're here right now practicing for the Final Four. Um, and, and this is the group, our seniors, and, 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 and in particular this group right here, you know, um, and getting the younger players to buy in and, and, and just realizing that those things throughout the year and the dedication and the heart and the soul, like that's what, it was gonna, that's what it was gonna take for us to be playing this deep in the season. You know, to be in the last four in the country, playing in December. Um, and uh, that's what this group has really done, um, has, has really taken it uh, to, the, to the next level, obviously. And, and um, earned an opportunity that a very, very, very few West Coast teams you know, you get to the final four, um, and certainly not with the kind of gauntlet that we had to run through three weekends on the road, <laughs> right? Um, to Iowa and back to California, to St. Louis, back to California, to North Carolina, um, and uh, you know, says a lot about this group's ability to uh, run that kind of gauntlet and to get in this space and to uh, compete in that way against a terrific team uh, today. Anything else? Uh, Coach, I just have one question for you. Um, in the last four years, this we've talked about this incredible group of seniors that you have. Um, 2016 Elite Eight, top of the Sky Act, two years after that, now we're in the Final Four. Um, is this just an incredible group of student athletes that you've had the last four years, or is this the standard for promoting this for soccer moving forward? Both. <laughs> Both. I mean, it's a special group it's, and, and um, a team of you know 27 players and our coaching staff and our support staff. Um, you know, his. his uh, uh, allowed us to make the most of this season, this opportunity. Um, but it's it's been building, and it's I feel very confident that you know we're going to continue to to operate in, in this level um, for the reasons of like what I shared earlier, you know, and what you were sharing about you know the seniors pulling you aside and saying keep it going. Um, there's just a lot of, of uh, you know pride and a standard that we set now, um, and that bar is uh, is just elevated. It's on the back of our shirts every day at practice. Aim higher. Right, aim higher. We have still something to aim higher for uh, from here. Awesome, thanks. Last question I have uh, for Issa, um, just because we talked earlier before the season started um, in a pre preseason interview, your goal was to get to the Elite Eight and uh, get past that and surpass that 2016 team that you were a part of. You did that. You did that and more. You got to the Final Four and did it in PKs where you guys fell to mm. Chicago or in. Uh, previously in 2016 with, with one of your stops. So just kind of tell us how satisfying is it to, to be in this situation, be one of the last four teams in the country after all the hard work that this team's put, put through? I'm just so unbelievably proud to be a part of this team. I think these past four years of being on it, we've had a hunger and we've had a passion and a belief that this is the level that we can take ourselves to and more and to just be a part of this team my senior season and to round out my soccer career that way with a team that has so much fight and love um, and joy for each other, it it just makes me so happy to be a part of it. I wouldn't have wanted to do it any other way. And I know that going forwards, I just have so much, uh, we have so much more to give. This team has so much more to give and I'm so excited to continue to to watch that and to see that and see what happens in the next, the next years because it wasn't a mistake that we're here today. It was not a mistake and you'll see us here again. I fully believe that. Left to right, we have goalie Amanda Kessler, head coach Alison Wilbur, uh, midfielder Busy Moore, and forward Julia Keogh. This is the uh, second half of the press conference here for the semifinals game two. We need an opening statement from Coach Blues on your thoughts on the game. <laughs> We're excited to advance. Uh, we, we anticipated a 
a high tempo quality game. Uh, Pomona is a technical team. Uh, I think they're very well organized and uh, certainly with uh, a goalkeeper whose distribution strength um, was something we had to be very aware of and prepared for. So um, we thought we started well, uh, didn't have a t much to show on the scoreboard for the possession that we had um, in the first half. and. Um, you know, felt we could push it, push it a little bit more in the second to get the get on the board. What was the difference in those in that brief time in the second half where you got both those goals back to back pretty quickly? It seemed like kind of what what was different uh, from your game on the sideline, maybe just kind of what led those to those goals. I think we uh, adjusted from some of the small play that we had that really didn't move us anywhere. Uh, behind the uh, back line to um, having intent that was more direct, uh, more purposeful to get behind the line and uh, and just not fiddle around with the ball so much. <laughs> I think I saw you guys have like 18 different goal scores, maybe, maybe more than 10. What's kind of been the key to your offense, just keeping that ball moving around and having that many different goal threats on offense? Yeah, I think in the for the run of the season, for the most part, we were getting goals where where we could find them. Sometimes from set pieces, like today, um, you know, I think it took um, our two junior strikers, Julia being one of them, and Sheila uh, McQuillan, maybe to get in their bet best form, uh, which is fortunate for us you know, uh, that they're finding it now in postseason. Uh, so we couldn't, we, we weren't relying on any one player. We had a ACL to uh, one of our more prolific attacking players, a little bit better than halfway through the season. So we, we began to get goals where we could. For the student athletes, does this game feel different to you guys kind of being on the stage versus maybe with the first three games of the tournament were like, just kind of being here in the semifinal stage, knowing that it's down to 14 and it's just, it's E4 here, competing for a spot of the championship. Is this year if you want to start? Sure. <laughs> um, I think definitely, um, like the past few days, just all of the, like the great atmosphere that we've been fortunate to be in and um, seeing all the other teams is definitely a little bit different of feel. But I think once we stepped across the line today, it kind of just felt like another, uh, another tight, close game with a really competitive team. Um, we are a very experienced team in the postseason, so I think once we got through um, the beginning and just got past the nerves, it felt more of just like another competitive game. And Julia. <laughs> um, I just am really grateful for the treatment that NCAA has given us. Um, it's very cool, the experience of a large stadium like this um, and all of the help that they give us but before and after this game. Um, so it made this experience like really enjoyable. It's what we all dream about. Um, and some of us only get this opportunity like once in their lives. So I'm just happy to be here. Um, when we were playing the game, I, I was just excited, but it felt like it felt like just another game. All the surroundings were just kind of blocked out to me. It was me, my teammates, and the ball. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Julie, you scored the game on goal, Fiona or was credited as the game on goal. Do you want to talk us through that sequence? Yeah, it was a great ball played in by Amanda. And I could we've been focusing so much on how their back line plays, so I kind of knew how the defense would react to a ball like that. So I just kind of focused on playing my own type of game. <coughs> and then once I was 1v keeper, we do so much finishing that it almost it just came naturally, I believe. And it was a pretty spectacular moment. <laughs> uh, Bria had, had 21 goals this season. Amanda and Izzy, do you want to just talk about how you worked to shut her out this game? Um, I think coming into the game, we knew that she was a really talented player. Um, so we just knew that we had to stick with her and not give her much room. Um, and just kind of, we knew that she would get some opportunities, but we had to limit those and just, uh, just keep going and try not to allow her to turn or anything and just try to take away as much of the game away from her as possible. 
We worked a lot um, with my keyboard coach, Al Laux, um, to match her playing style and the type of balls that she likes to shoot um, and where she likes to shoot from. Um, so I felt very prepared going into this game knowing her playing style.